What's up, everybody? Falco here, and I'm here with my good friend, Wolfie Cass. We're here to talk about hero roles. But before we start this video, I want to let you know that the first part is on Wolfie's channel. So go watch that first, or you might be a little confused what we're talking about. Link to that video will be in the description below. Check it out. Hi, Philco. I just want to first say thank you again for helping me with this project, but we still have half the roles to go. So we talked about the frontline and range damage heroes in my video, which means now we'll be explaining and sorting the remaining two roles. You might have also noticed that in the other video, we actually went over a majority of the roster. But the reason is because so many characters in this game can flex multiple roles because your build can really make a big difference. You're going to see a lot of crossover here. Let's jump into my favorite role first, the assassins. First, let's identify what an assassin is. Honestly, it's not all that different from any other game that has a similar arch archetype. Assassins focus on trying to find enemies that have low health or are otherwise vulnerable and try to do as much damage as they can to them. These heroes are masters at flanking and putting pressure on priority targets. Our assassin characters can be sorted into two sub roles. We have what we're calling duelists, who are heroes who excel at taking on small scale one on one or one on two fights and either winning or forcing the enemy to run, and our other role is finishers, who are characters that want to focus on chasing down and killing enemies that are running away before quickly making an escape to do it all over again. In Duelists, we are placing Wu, Taito, Ramsey, Gnosis, and we'll even add Roland. All of these characters should win any small fight against someone out of position, but they also have the added flexibility to contribute to team fights if they play carefully. They can do a lot of damage very quickly if you aren't paying attention. So if you run into any of these heroes by yourself, that is not a fight you want to take if at all possible. Now for those deadly finishers. Here we're going to put Trip, Kajir, and believe it or not, we're also going to put in Voden and T-Mat. These heroes are really good at confirming kills because of their high movement and burst potential. If you see or hear any of them coming after you, you better hope you have a good escape or a healer nearby. It may be weird to see two range characters here, but after experimenting with some single target focus builds, these two can kill you just as quickly. Another thing of note is that you can also consider Taito in this category, but building for kills can require you to trade off some of his escape options. Players that are wanting to learn assassins first and foremost need to learn the limits of your hero. And what we mean by that is knowing how much damage you can do and how quickly you can do it, and also recognizing how much damage you can take. Every character in this role is lightly armored and most of them have under 1800 health. So you need to be extra careful to not stay too long in close quarters fights. You really shouldn't be in the front of the enemy team or trying to initiate fights ever because the enemy can very quickly turn and lock you down, and then all you are is power to them. Now, let's talk about our supports. A support hero is one that assists the team by providing both offensive and defensive buffs, giving strong utility, and overall keeping allies alive and healthy. Whether you are giving heals, applying crowd control, or a bit of both, supports are always very strong and always valuable. We're actually going to divide our supports into three sub roles. First, we have healers, who keep ally health bars high and provide a lot of defensive utility to keep the advantage in fights. Next, we have our controllers, who are heroes who provide a lot of debuffs and lockdown to prevent enemies from doing damage or moving. And finally, we have hybrids, who, as you might expect, are a fine mix of the two. These heroes have aspects of healing, control, and utility, but don't necessarily excel in any one particular spot. For our healers, we're throwing in Sven, Vidasi, and Ashlyn. These three heroes will have tremendous healing numbers and can perform very clutch saves with major heals or providing armor. Even on their own, they can make it feel like killing someone is impossible. Now, admittedly, Ashlyn's healing is very slow, but it's also very easy to apply because of Kador's large auras. Having Kador also provides an extra body to absorb damage and CC in a pinch. Now let's talk about controllers. Here we have Zenobia, Oru, Paco, and even Imani can fit here. These supports don't have any healing, but they have a lot of potential to apply constant debuffs to groups of enemies at once, whether in their base kits or within their upgrades. This makes them very good at following up to the engage of frontliners. Oru and Amani do trade off some of their damage output in these specialized builds, but they can be very valuable if you do need some more control. 
Last but not least, that leaves our hybrids. In this role, we will put Zandora, Griselma, Voden, and let us cook for a moment here, Gnosis. All four of these heroes have their own unique way of providing support to the team. Zandora is a somewhat tanky healer with big buffing auras. Griselma helps control points with her damage and cleansing portal beasts. And Voden gives the incredibly powerful jump pad that gives a little bit of healing. AoE poison and a powerful and easy to charge focus. Nasus is here simply because of the powerful Mighty Yop upgrade combined with his E Clash talent. This provides the whole team eight seconds of extra damage and movement speed. We also have to give credit for his CC if you built him this way. No matter what support you play, the biggest tip we can give is knowing when to use your abilities at the right time. It's easy to just spam all that you've got in a big fight and just think that you'll automatically win, when in reality you could have saved someone with a big heal or a jump pad, or chaining your CC could have prevented someone from getting away. On a similar note, you need to not use your defensive utility on someone who doesn't need it. If your low health Wu is already around the corner and not in line of sight, he probably doesn't need any healing because he's not in any danger. And finally, don't underestimate how much damage you can actually do. The team that wins the fights are the ones that stay alive longer, and your damage can add up more than you might think. Well, I think that's just about it for our Hero Roles collaboration videos. We hope that you enjoyed watching, but more importantly, that you learned something about the role you wish to pursue. Take this knowledge and work on your build and overall skill and win those games. This was a lot of fun to put together and teach you all about. And if you haven't, make sure you subscribe to Failco and watch all of her other stuff because she's really funny and also does informative videos just like I do. Seriously, you are such a huge inspiration. Stop, I'm blushing. Anyway, thanks for watching. Failco out. Back from the dead.